from the original Geno's Pizza and Grill. And we have uh, gotten the phone lines all hooked up, the bench racing hotline, as it were. And we've got Brandon McReynolds on the line. Hi, Brandon. How you doing? Good. Thanks for having me on the show. Hey, absolutely. Uh, how was the party after the big win? I always <laughs> ask everybody, uh, how big was the party? <laughs> it was uh, it was pretty low key, you know. I'm only I'm only 20 years old right now. I actually turned 21 here in a couple of weeks, so we uh, we kept it pretty low key. Just just went and hung out with um, my uh, my car owner, Sandra Turner. She uh, and and Mr. Turner was actually back in Texas. He uh, he's been staying wide open, just just working really hard. So we hung out with Mrs. Turner and, and Harry Scott, who's been a big um, has been a huge involvement over at uh, Turner Motorsports and a bunch of my guys and. Just kind of hung out. We actually watched the rerun of the race because I hadn't watched any of the footage, and I really, I was so excited. I really didn't even know how we won the thing, and um, so it was, uh, it was really cool, pretty low key night, and uh, got a good night's rest, and headed on back to North Carolina. Hey, well, Brandon, it's it's interesting. You say you watched the replay of the race, and you didn't know what had happened. What did you see? That did you see anything watching the replay that surprised you? Well, uh, to be honest with you, I mean, when I go back and watch watch a race, whether whether I won the race or run fifth or run twenty fifth, I I try to pick out my mistakes, and and I felt like you know early in the race I made some bad decisions just trying to get to the outside, especially in those Arctic cars because they don't suck up very good to one another, just with the aero package that they have, and um, made it made a mistake early in the race and got back in traffic, and and it just put us so far behind, and and made a, made a mistake leaving pit road. My guys at Turner Motorsports, they they had awesome. They had an awesome pit stop. Got fuel in the thing and ended up stumbling, um, leaving pit road and, and almost stalled the thing. But um, got really lucky. Got off pit road in third, and then it was just kind of a matter of time and uh, playing the right moves from then. I thought it was kind of interesting, Brandon, when I read that uh, you said you didn't think you have much patience when you're in a race car, and yet it sounds to me like what you just told me was that you had to show an awful lot of patience when you made a mistake here and there to not try and get it all back at one time, and you were able to do that. So a little counterintuitive, I guess, is the fact that you say you don't have much patience, but at least in this instance, it looks like you did. Well, no, I appreciate it. And, and, and honestly, I, I um, that's just a testament to, to my guys and, and Mark Rett and everybody over at the shop at Turner Motorsports and and, and just everyone involved, you know, teaching me the right things to do and, and spending that time and talking with James Boucher, who's one of my teammates over there and has become a really close friend and, and um, just trying to learn as much patience as possible. But most of all, that was just, you know, that was due to Mark Rett and my spotter, Pat Boyd, doing a really good job of keeping me calm because I was going crazy in there. I was ready to go to the front. I was ready to lead them around, especially coming off that strong run at Daytona. But we come from behind, and, and, it, and I – I think the fans enjoyed the last couple laps there. I think, you know, obviously at the same time as wanting to win, you got to put on a good show for the fans, and I think we did both. All right, it was a great show. We're talking to Brandon McReynolds, who was the winner of the ARCA race at Talladega this past Friday. Brandon, how much communication do you have with your father during the race? We wouldn't be doing our job if we didn't ask you that question and ask you what that's like. Oh, yeah, no, me and Dad have a really good relationship. We, um... We spent a lot of time mostly talking about racing and, and you know how to how to handle different situations, how to um, how to handle sponsors and things like that. And then when it comes to you know me racing for for uh, Mr. Turner and Mrs. Turner, it's uh, he's pretty hands off. You know he gives me advice if I if I do something that he doesn't that he doesn't see that that I should have done, like jumping to the outside early in the race. But uh, at the same time, I think he really enjoys just being dad. And, and luckily. Yeah. You know, Mr. Turner has given me that opportunity to, to go and race for him and not have to worry about the politics and and worry about things that I shouldn't worry about. He just tells me to go out there and go get the trophy, and I think that, that means a lot for my dad because he can kind of sit back and just really take everything in and, and, you know, just allow me to do my job and allow those guys that are so good at doing their job um, day in and day out when it comes down to the races. Well, you were very disappointed, I'm sure, at not winning at Daytona. You had a chance to do that as well, came up a little short fuel-wise. And uh, I know, again, in some of the stuff that I read that uh, you and, and your dad, Larry, had a discussion about that, and he said that that may have been one of the best lessons ever to learn is how to lose a race like that, and it can turn around and teach you how to win. Do, do you feel that, that you learned enough at Daytona and that helped you win that race at Talladega? Yeah, you know, I, I really don't feel like I could have done anything different at, at Daytona. They they told me after the race that I'd saved like seven and a half laps of fuel or something crazy like that, just with the cautions and 
and cutting the car off and running about part throttle, letting the draft carry me around. But the biggest thing that helped me get get over Daytona was just just more of a, a, a better personal attitude and understanding that there's there's people out there that are going through a lot worse things than some kid losing a race down in Daytona and International Speedway, even though that's a huge deal to all of us racers. But, you know, like that car I drove for uh, Turner Motorsports along with the Wintron the other day, that, that 32 car, that was actually Bo Slocum's car who uh, – who was a very famous late model racer, drove that ARCA car a couple times, and, you know, he ended up passing away a little over a year ago. So I look at that situation and say, look, you know, it's really not that bad. You know, it's um, things aren't as bad as I think they are, even if I'm running out of fuel or whatever. So I just kind of got over and kept that mentality, understanding that people are going through a lot worse things than me running out of fuel and moved on to the next one, and it all worked out. What is in the future for the rest of 2012? Do you have some more ARCA stuff lined up? Uh, what else is going on? You know, that's a, that's a good question. I uh, I spoke with Mr. Turner after the race was over. Obviously, he was really excited, and um, I was supposed to go see him down in Darlington, and I'm really looking forward to that opportunity just to uh, sit down and see where we're at. And, um, you know, hopefully – I, I've always been a big believer, and you got to win in the series that you're racing in before you start looking down the road to trucks or nationwide or cup. But I, um, I, I you know, I like to just get more seat time, whatever he feels necessary. If that's going and running ARCA races, or going and running on a go kart somewhere, or going and running in the truck series. I, I just enjoy racing no matter what I'm in, and and um, I feel like he's guided my career a lot, and along with the help of my dad and my family. And I feel like you know it's kind of in God's hands, and, and we'll just go from there and see whatever he wants to do, and we'll go race. Brandon, how early did you start racing? I started when I was eight years old um, running the Bangalore Series out at the uh, out of the summer shootout, and it's, it's really cool because now that being 20 years old, I'm actually working for uh, Jeff Burton right now, and we've been building his son Harrison, a late model, and Jeff actually ran the car, so it's really cool that you asked me that because I'm over here right now at Jeff's shop helping him mount a seat for Harrison, and Harrison's 12 years old, and we're getting ready to go test him in his first late model test here in a couple of weeks. So it's kind of bringing back some of those memories from when I was younger. That's cool. <laughs> it's it's amazing to hear that. You know, at 20 years old when you were younger. So uh, <laughs> it, it, we we yeah. had a lot of discussion uh, last week as well uh, about the the new young group of drivers, and you know you're in that group along with uh, Blaney and and Elliot and all these guys that are very familiar names to a lot of race fans who are Charlies in my age. You know, when we're in our 50s. And you know we're we're very he laughs. We say we're in our thanks, Brandon. I appreciate. It. <laughs> oh, no, I, I just uh, it, it's cool you said that because you're, you're absolutely right. There, there's so many. There's such a good talent pool out there right now, and it's really hard because it seems like the racing industry is really backed up because of the economy and lack of sponsorships. And um, but that, and that's what made that win so special. Is I feel like any time I'm running for Turner Motorsports, I, I have such a good relationship with them, but I feel like I'm always fighting for a job. I'm always fighting for that next opportunity, and I treat each race like it's my last. So I, uh, it, it's cool you said that because there is a lot of talent out there right now, and it definitely keeps you on your toes. Yeah, it, it is amazing. It almost does seem like there's almost this bottleneck of all this great talent, and it, it, in some ways it seems like we may lose, I don't want to say a generation, but a, a group of drivers that just can't find – the sponsorship money to run, and and I don't know if that's a, a thirty, you know, a, a twenty year old, twenty five year old somewhere, but there is that group now coming up, your your group that's you know twenty and under, that hopefully that bottleneck will find a way to to dissipate itself, and you guys can get some great rides because like I say there's great talent. You lead the group. Thanks so much for being with us. Congratulations again on your win. We hope that you get a ride in some more Arca stuff. We'd love to see you up in Toledo. I don't know if that's going to happen, but uh, if if it does. We'll uh, we'll check you out when you we'll come this you way. Yep. Yes, sir. I appreciate you guys having me on, and I, I enjoy doing it. Anytime you guys want to chat, just give me a holler. We'll do that. Thanks, Thanks so much, Brandon. Brandon, Brandon uh, McReynolds, one of the uh, one of the real up and comers uh, in uh, stock car racing, and uh, terrific young man. So uh, cool we guy. enjoyed having him on the show. Pretty cool guy. Yep.